The Skoda Kodiak, the all-new SUV from Skoda, is today in Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth cabrios and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. We're exclusively for you at the world premiere. Let's first take a look at some premiere shots and you can see the first overview of the car. Let's start with the design in the front. We see a typical Skoda front grille. It's held in black color right here. And special thing is, of course, the headlights. They are imitating a human eye, as you see, you know. Well, you have to so have some imagination, but they have the 3D effect going right in there. Optional, there are also LED headlights available now. The lower part, you see this SUV style with black plastic and a comb structure right here. And it looks a little bit like a stronger Superb. So it keeps the same elegance, but just put higher. In the side profile, what can you see? First of all, a huge design line over here, over the door handles. The total length of the car is 4 meters 70 or 15 foot 4. And what's interesting here, this car is also based on the Volkswagen Tiguan plat platform and you see some similarities. This one here has an 11 centimeters longer wheelbase and will therefore be quite identical to the Tiguan XL. The Tiguan also US customers will receive, for example, because there will be a Tiguan, the basis version we presented to you already, and the Tiguan XL, that one with longer the wheelbase, like this one here and will also have more space on the inside here. And that's also about the Volkswagen AG. They share a lot of parts that make sense money-wise, of course. However, you see that in the side profile, this car is a little bit different than the one um, from the Tiguan. Let's see if we can close the door again. Always a lot around here in the world premiere. And what is interesting here, let's see the, the line of the windows. The windows are way slimmer here than, for example, in the Tiguan, and that makes this appearance here a little bit more agile. And this is needed because it's a longer car. It's not a real small compact SUV. It's one of the biggest compact SUVs now, and therefore you have to make the windows a little bit smaller to give it a sportier appearance. Interesting that the design is followed all the way until the end, and the taillights are even more interesting from the side because you can see this crystal artwork here that is well known in the Czech Republic, for example. We've seen that, that they introduced it with the Škoda Superb and always attracts attention, especially at night when you can really see it. The wheel arches form a trapeze right here and optionally mounted 19-inch rims, quite big and they got a very nice design as they combine two colors and also show something dynamic. And the third thing they have included here is with every Skoda, it's also nothing new for Skoda, but also worth mentioning the ice scraper is hidden right here. So you always have one if you may be living in Kodiak and have a lot of snow. They got a new solution to protect the doors and we know that from a Ford Focus, for example, you see those covers here, they flip out automatically when you open the door, front and the rear, and it's just here's some rubber part and protects your own door and also other cars, for example, in a parking lot. It's not entirely new overall in the automotive industry, but you know, why not take in it? It's a clever idea in general, even if Ford was first. And also, if we open the door, we know that from the Skoda Superb, there's an umbrella hidden right there, so when you get out of the car, it's raining, you can get that one here directly and you don't have to have a Rolls Royce to have this function here. Also, nice idea. And the rear of the car, you can see the taillights here again in the full form. Horizontal accentuation, I think very beautiful and also a dynamic style. This is the 4x4 version, only the 
Low entry versions will be just front wheel driven, more to the engine soon. Kodiak, by the way, the name derives from an uh, island in Alaska and also the town is named Kodiak just with a K. They've changed it here now to a Q and you maybe also know the famous Kodiak beers. And is this a beer in a car? Well, as we know, for example, there are also cars that are cats. I don't know, it doesn't remind, remind me anyhow with a beer or something like that, but I think overall a strong and beautiful appearance. And this could also be a problem indeed also internally for the corporation <laughs> with the other SUVs they are producing. And talking about that, Skoda is not available in the US yet. However, they have recently registered some patterns there for their normal car models for the Octavia and stuff. And they are thinking about going to the US market, initially starting with this very car. So we have to expect a lot more there. Maybe this one could be also a breakthrough in the US. Then I've heard a lot of Auto Group fans from the US saying, oh, we really want Skoda over here at the US. And especially as VW as a brand, maybe doesn't have the best image in the US at the moment. Other than that, the normal, you know, Europe and also other um, countries and stuff, they will receive the first cars in March 2017. It's hard to see the colors here in this strange light, but just to show you some colors we have here on stage, we've concentrated on the red car, this one here in white. Or would you rather fancy a steel gray car? We also know this color here already from the Skoda Superb. Very elegant choice. And I'm also a fan of these fitting alloys. Again, as we've seen with the other ones, Again, 19 inch. Of course, a little bit more expensive. And also in a dark blue color. This is my favorite here of the day so far, even though in this very dark light we cannot see it that much. But here in this color, you can also better see the power dome we have. This is combined with the Skoda logo. The trunk. Uh, there is a mechanism available here for the foot opening. I'm not sure if this car is equipped with it. Um, maybe not. I just want to try it out. This is the normal hatch electric version here. There's a lot of space inside, about 700 liters to maximum up to over 2,000 liters. And for example here, more storage space beneath it. This cover is here because you can then make an even surface to the front seats. That's the reason for it. And you can also flip the front seats, from the back seats here from, from here. Um, let's see, uh, someone, someone blocking it. Maybe with the back or something. Let's try it again. Yeah, it's now unlocked. We have to do it again when someone... Huh? So maybe leaving it. Let's do it now. <laughs> there it is. There's one. <laughs> so you can easily unlock it from there. And there it is. The second one. You can also totally flip it down and then you can even loading space there in the end. And what is also interesting that optional, you can also have a front co-driver seat, which you can also flip down. And then through the whole area, you will have a maximum loading length of two meters and 90. Then the rear seating area. And it's a car with a relatively long wheelbase. And well, I don't have a real measurement now with the front seat because people are changing it all the time, but I can really promise you, no matter how tall the driver is in front of you, you will have enough knee space, even if you're very tall. I'm uh, six foot one, or one meters 86. That is still some <laughs> space above my head, even though we have the panoramic roof mounted here. If you don't have the panoramic roof, it will surely be even more. Interesting also those inlets here. I mean, yes, it, well, it, I think it's only plastic, but it has some kind of dark wood look. Also, you can, for example, protect your children from the sun, like this, easy solution, and solid building quality, although those ones are one of the early, early models right here. Also electric window controls here in the rear. You have an upright seating position, that's very nice. And you can also <laughs> have a ride with the seat, with the bench here. This where you can go forward, I think about 18 centimeters, or go all the way back and therefore then change the area you have here available and also in the trunk. This one here is not the seven seater version and this is of course also a reason why you can go in the front. We'll also take a look at the seven seater version very soon. Well, this setup will also be quite often bought because seven seater 
option is just optional. Not everyone really needs it. But overall, due to this upright seating position here and a lot of space, it's a very good feeling we have here. And if we switch to the middle part, for example, you can also see that right here, there's also temperature control and optional seat heating for the rear seat. And then you can flip down for beverage holders. Nice, by the way, that you use Alcantara on the inside. I don't have any information yet if it's leather red or real animal skin on the outside, but I think it should be faux leather. And then it also would be a great seat combination here. And let's get inside for the cockpit overview. So you hear this beeping sound maybe in the back because the ignition of the car is turned on. And let's take a look at the overview here. What we can see is that the middle part then dissolves to the outer part, raises it a little bit. And for example, if you compare the Tiguan against it, you can see the vents are placed on the side of the huge infotainment system and not on top of it. Also again, this veneer used. Then the temperature control right here with the chrome surrounding right there, all easily accessible from the driver's seat. My favorite part is here, the DSG automatic shifting lever. It has a totally new style. We haven't seen that yet in the Volkswagen Corporation. So it reminds me of some other brands, not of the Volkswagen Co Corporation, to be, no, but it looks very solid. DSG will optionally be available or already combined with the 4x4 with the top engines. The infotainment system is of course one of the big new things. You can scroll around it like this or also use the right knob right here. And this one here, Smart Link, will be very important because you can connect your smartphone and your auto, Apple CarPlay, Mirror Link, how that works. We show you in every review with a car that has it. Of course, you can also just connect your phone via Bluetooth that is still also available. And you see those buttons here, usually in the other Volkswagen Corporation cars, um, also in modern Skodas, they are still present buttons. Here, there are no, no buttons anymore. They have been removed and they are just those fields on the infotainment screen. So that's a very interesting new thing we can see right here. Also, we can check out if the GPS is working with a satellite view that is available here and you can scroll around it like in a smartphone. And also the responsive times are quite okay for having this satellite view right here. In car, you will also see off-road information, for example, the angle of the of the tires are uh, turned, also a compass is right here because this car will also be suitable for off-road riding. This one here will be for the hill descent control, for example. So overall, a convincing menu. You see it does collect some fingerprints. You have to wipe it quite often with the microfiber, that's for sure. But overall, it is well integrated in the system. It's not like we've seen with um, other cars where we have something attached right on here which doesn't give a good visual view. Here you can really combine a visual view that is seamlessly integrated together with a system that is very easy to control because every Skoda customer so far knows how to control the system and that will remain the same, although they have integrated something new by it. The steering wheel is also basically known from other from the other Skoda cars. So it's the same scheme like with the Skoda Superb a little bit, that on the outside there's more that they've created and on the inside they have been rather conservative, but maybe the customers will rather appreciate that and just say, okay, that's fine by me. Manual control of the steering wheel position right here, but it works everything also good. The instruments, they have this retro style with the wide background in this edition here at least. There will also be other versions available. And what's also interesting, we don't have hard plastic on top of the dashboard here. Everything is a little bit softened up. So overall, we can say it is really a premium quality we see already here with those very early cars. And Skoda has been famous for that for the recent years that they have really a very good interior build quality, but not at a very high price. So the prices for the Skoda Kodiak, for example in Germany, will start about 24, 25,000 euros. And you know, that's really a very good deal. And I mentioned it earlier, the panoramic roof, we also have right in here. And you can open it maximum like this. And that almost creates a little bit of a convertible feeling. And there's also this shade available. If it gets too sunny, you can either remove it right here or have that shade put all the way right here. So overall, from the cockpit front here, 
a good and solid experience. The seating position is also very comfortable. And about the storage spaces here, there's a massive armrest in the middle part and also a lot of space and you see they have really used every space they have. Here also you can switch it around. That's interesting. It should work like this. Hey, it's almost like, you know, before beverage holders now. Interesting system, haven't seen that one. It's almost like a Lego brick building here. <laughs> Very interesting. And then in the front there's another storage space and this will also be a place where you can optionally pick, first of all USB and AUX port, 12 volt power supply. And here in the front it will also be possible to have the inductive charging of your smartphone. And by the way with the, I forgot here because I see the button here right now, you will here also have this area view, will also have feature the new camera system where we have an around camera view, four cameras, mirrors, mirrors, back, front. And then you can really have an around view of the car. You can also change the perspective. This is the wide angle view now, so you have a good overview. Although I have a rather big car, you still have a good overview. And the glove box right here, there's a lot of lot of space inside here. Well, well it could be bigger. Actually, in the Superb, I think it's better, but what well, is nice, there's a cooled glove box available. So obviously I have to save some space here in the glove box, it seems like. But interesting fact that in front of this front seat you have some more space that is interesting here again that you can see it this is the additional storage space we know that for example from Volkswagen vans and then there's also the excuse why the glove box is not that roomy because above there reminds of the T6 Volkswagen T6 you have some more space above that and that's of course then a lot of space you have available and the seating position it is upright and comfortable as you are used to in a SUV and uh, you could very well imagine going miles and miles with it. Electric controls here but just in the very top version and those top versions will probably cost about 40,000 euros or something like that. You will also be just fine with menu controls of the seats. And the final space, storage space here, you can also pick bo big bottles in here and here you can also open the rear hatch. And this one here is a seven-seater version right now. By the way, some bags here for the rear part of the seats for blanket in there, just another idea. And then let's start with the controls here. For example, we can pull here. We can fold the bench like this. So this is the first possibility. You see it right here. And then there's this handle at the upper part of the seats. And if you pull that one, you can also slide the seats. And take a look inside first for the sixth and the seventh seat. It's optionally available. It's rather, you know, thought for children because you won't have so much knee space in front of you. But you can also adjust the bench in front of you. You have to remember that. And I'll just test right now here. Yeah? So getting in is quite okay. Why not? And then, well, the problem is, <laughs> yeah, um, I cannot really sit right now as I'm here. But um, maybe if, well, if this bench here would be put a little bit more forward, then it would work. So uh, we'll make one cut and then back get, get back to you. So now I could sit here, knee space wise, and you have to check out what is here with the rear bench. You see, mm, it's not really fitting then. So. I think in the rear maybe with 1 meter 60, 1 meter 70, that still might work. Um, other than that, it's really just for emergency purposes. Here, by the way, the seat belts are hidden. Um, it's a good solution if you, for example, um, are offering tours in the Normandy. Greetings to Trevor, one of our Autogofuel viewers. And maybe there's some children with the family in here and then they, the children can be sitting right in the very, very rear. And of course, if those seats here in the rear are put up, there's not so much trunk left. And that's the space you have left when those seats are flipped up and you can also flip them down right from here, here and that way. Then you have an even surface again and, well this one is broken already but here on that part here you can get it right back here or if someone moves it up from here you can also flip it up again. But you see this obviously, um, I mean, Usually it should be quite, quite stable, but you know, in the, the world premieres when so many people 
uh, touching it that might break at some point. And we already know it from a superb, this torch that is, that is mounted right here. See here, this small torch. And it's also a magnet right here, so you can also place it somewhere at the car on the outside. And what about towing? There's a button right here, and then you can release it right there. Yeah, or maybe with the foot or also by hand. Maximum towing capacity, at least with the biggest engine, not sure what about the smaller ones, 2.5 tons. And if you want to hide it again, press the button and then with the foot or... Yeah, there it is. <laughs> and another interior, this one here with the bright style. I usually really like the bright style, but here we have the full animal skin equipment, which we do not recommend. The Alcantara combination was better, of course, and also less expensive. But usually, um, as the seat option should be also equal to the ones in the Superb, you should also have a bright option where we have a bright microfiber on the inside. But in general, talking about the form of the seats, I really have a very good impression. So, a lot of comfort combined with this upright seating position. And here you also have this bright ceiling and interesting here we do not have a panoramic roof mounted so that's another difference and then you can already see that you have more headroom when you don't have the panoramic roof mounted and here on the infotainment system also again something different also the google street view is available right here um, this is also from berlin here right now where we are at the world premiere so a lot of new features they have implemented here because this car will always be connected to the internet so let's see what's beneath the hood, hydraulic dampers. This one here is the TSI. We will start with petrol engines and diesel engines. Petrol engines, we will have a 1.4 liter TSI with 125 or 150 horsepower. Then a 2 liter TSI with 180 horsepower or 220 horsepower, similar than in the Tiguan. And also 2 liter TDI with 150 and 180 horsepower. And the 1.4 liter TDI will then later also be used, at least, that's what the rumors say, for a plug-in hybrid version than the 1.4 liter petrol plus the electric drive, which is supposed to be a range fully electric of 50 kilometers an hour. And of course, in the combined consumption cycle, it will lower the consumption then. So really looking forward for this version. And I think that should also be released maybe together with the Tiguan GTE. So the last thing I heard is that this wasn't really 100% decided yet. But we will really be looking forward to that. And now we are joined by Martin Hitlitschka. He is the head of powertrain development at Skoda. And we, of course, want to know. I've just n um, noticed what engines you will have in the car. Basically, what is your favorite engine? What is the one you recommend for the customers here? Oh, so my favorite is a TDI 140 kilowatts. Uh, it's 400 Newton meters. And uh, 4x4 driven car. Uh, which has uh, the, for me the, the most uh, power and it's also possible to carry two and a half tons uh, uh, trailer. So this two and a half tons um, towing capacity, is it just available with the two liter TDI or with uh, what, what engines can we reach it? With the TDI engines it's, uh, it's possible because uh, they have uh, big torque uh, and they have also with a four by in a 4x4 four four driven cars they have a, uh, the DQ500 uh, gearbox. So also the gearbox is, uh, is, is uh, important to have to, to get this power to, uh, to be able to carry two and a half tons uh, trailer. The um, petrol engines, uh, which towing capacity will they have then? Uh, the 132 kilowatts uh, engine EA888, uh, uh, which is an Audi uh, engine from from Gear, uh, from from uh, Hungary. Uh, I think it is the mo most powerful and also very uh, very nice engine. Also, of course, we have a. Uh, TSI engines uh, with uh, 92 and 110 kilowatts, uh, uh, which uh, are produced uh, also in our production plant in the Czech Republic. They have an, uh, about two tons capacity of, for towing or something 1. like that? 1.8, I think. Okay. okay. And what emphasis did you put on the development of the engines? So what was important in combination with this car? Because it's obviously an SUV. Yes, of course. The car is uh, the biggest car uh, we uh, introduced in the modern, in the, in the, uh, modern history. 
for our customers. Uh, each, uh, the car is bigger than a Tiguan because we have a 110 millimeters wheelbase more than the, the our our older brother from Volkswagen, uh, and uh, uh, of course uh, such a bigger car have to have a, a different uh, technical um, developments uh, means of. of of course, because of the wheelbase, we had to change uh, the the uh, cardan uh, shaft uh, and all the uh, all the uh, technical points uh, depending on the wheelbase, and uh, also to change uh, uh, some um, um, uh, geometry on the axles uh, and other other points. Uh, the car has the biggest uh, wheels we can. Uh, offer at the moment 725 millimeters diameter uh, and uh, it uh, allow us to uh, offer 20 inches uh, uh, aluminium alloy wheels too so it is very attractive uh, even if uh, we have a SUV. Will you also offer the bi-turbo diesel with 240 horsepower in this car? Not yet, uh, of course I am a, a development engineer and I would like to have a more powerful cars and I like power and uh, speed. Uh, at the moment in the start of uh, production of the car we don't uh, offer this big engine but uh, I am hoping uh, to get it in our production range. And last question, if I maybe don't want a pure petrol engine and don't want a pure diesel engine, is there something else you can offer us? Uh, something else you mean uh, in the point of uh, Engines or yes. maybe something with electricity. <laughs> I, I I don't think we will offer in this car in the next uh, few years some uh, electric electric engine or uh, some plug-in hybrid. Uh, we are um, we are expect so you could expect it in a superb on in our Octavia. Uh, this car is uh, brand new and uh, we will maybe offer it much later but not uh, in the next few years okay thank you very much but we're looking forward to the development of course and now my personal conclusion for the day what about the all new skoda codec first of all well skoda took a long time to bring an suv to the market now it's finally there it is too late but it won't be too late to boost sales yet again for skoda that's for sure with a very attractive exterior, no doubt. Also with those headlights, especially if you pick the higher trim levels. And also a very high class interior. Not for premium money, but you get premium quality. And the most important thing is you will have a lot of space on the inside. One of the best packages in this segment. And that's what Skoda is also famous for. So the price will can hardly be beaten only if other manufacturers go for a big discount and that will surely be a problem for other manufacturers in the compact segment because if you have you know premium build quality it gives great exterior a lot of space what else do you want to have i mean the engines are also known from the other cars in skoda or also the other volkswagen sisters really looking forward for the hybrid version of this one but from everything we've seen today without driving it yet we will of course very soon drive it as well but from what we see here right now if you take the rational choice and then also combine it, you know with a obviously likable car this is surely one of the best picks in the compact SUV segment we can already say it right now here at the world premiere I would like to know if you share this opinion put me your comments in the <laughs> in the comment section below that it's been a long day for me as well. You have to, a lot of light, a lot of heat here. Thousands of people. Your comments on the exterior, interior, and everything we gave you from the information here from our premiere. I hope you appreciate our effort just exclusively for you here in Autogefühl. And join us again at the next world premiere or also for one of our full reviews. Thank you very much for watching.